Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm gonna turn this into this. Future Tom here to tell you that this didn't work. I think what I have here is a prototype with elements that I can use in a future stove. The reason I'm posting this video in light of the fact that it didn't work is that I learned a lot in the process. There's some elements of the design, some of the techniques I used that were a lot of fun, but I feel like they were also learning opportunities for me. So if you think that sounds interesting to watch, stay tuned. Pravit, Gio Jewich, and Anyang Hasayo. So today I'm gonna to make a J-tube rocket stove with this two inch box tube. And I wanna use this flat piece of steel to make a grill over the fire tunnel. Normally with a rocket stove, you cook on the top with the fire coming out here. But I actually wanna cook on this section, the fire tunnel. And I'm gonna do that with a grill like this. I'm gonna use some round stock here to raise up sections of my grill to make it a grill versus a griddle. And my goal is to have a nice steady heat. The other idea that's been rattling around in my head a lot is making a dual fuel rocket stove. And I'm actually going to cannibalize this section, the fuel magazine, off of this little rocket stove I made a while ago. And the reason I'm doing that is because this one didn't work the dimensions of this one and a quarter inch tube was just too small to get the airflow that I needed. But I really loved how this little fuel magazine worked. So I'm gonna cut this off and add it to my rocket stove. A J-tube rocket stove normally gets the fuel put into a firebox here on this end of the stove. The fire then burns sideways through the fire tunnel and then the heat goes up the riser. I'm in the middle of editing this video and I wanted to welcome four new members. And they are Tommy Randon, Andrew Todd, John Murray, and Danny A. Since I haven't posted in a while, a few of you have been waiting for your mention, so thank you so much. I appreciate your patience, <laughs> and I appreciate your membership. And what I'd like to offer members here on the channel is the opportunity to get more information. So if there's a video or a project or something that you want to know more about or want to see something in particular, let me know in the community tab and I'll make a specific video that addresses that. Of course, that'll be available to all members and a continued thank you to all of my patrons and members. The other idea I've had that I want to incorporate into this hybrid rocket stove is a secondary fuel source. So I'm going to keep the firebox as the primary fuel source with small sticks and twigs, but I'm going to integrate this fuel magazine next to it to allow me to burn pistachio shells. I've been really curious about the pistachio shells that I have saved and whether or not they can be used as fuel. The thing is, in my experimentation, they don't burn as fast as, say, a stick or a twig, but they burn just fine. So my thinking is, if I'm putting sticks and twigs here, getting the fire moving through the fire tunnel, and then it contacts the pistachio shells as a secondary fuel source, that that will just contribute to that burn. At least that's how I think it's going to work. You know this is an experimentation channel. All right, let's get started and see how this comes together. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut off my fuel magazine here. And I've got an insert in here that held the fuel down inside the fire tunnel there. Let me pop that out. We were using this and I don't wanna cut it off. I'm using my trusty Workmate 200, circa 1989. This thing's stood the test of time. It's a little beat up.
while I've got this clamped down, I'm going to go ahead and process what I can potentially use again, and then go ahead and scrap what I can't use. Alright, so I think I can salvage this small piece of box tube. This has just got too much weld on it to be useful, so that's going to get recycled. I do think I can use the legs to make the legs for the new stove. Normally the firebox would go in vertically on a J-tube, but I want to have this angled, but I don't want to waste this much space, so I think what I'm going to do is match the angle. I am going to try and stick to the ratios of one, two, three, so one for a firebox, two for a fuel tunnel, and then three for riser. But I do want to get this whole grill in. Let's go 5, 10, 20. So 5 inch firebox, 10 inch fire tunnel, and then a 20 inch riser. I'm going to cut these a little long to give myself some wiggle room for how these different sections will connect. I'm sure some of you have already noticed and maybe have fingers twitching to leave a comment that this is galvanized. So I'm going to need to take that coating off before I weld it. Eyes and ears, JW. And while I'm grinding, I am wearing a respirator. Even though I'm outside, which diminishes the danger, the stuff that goes in your lungs has, it has a cumulative effect. Even in its small amounts, it adds up. I'm definitely being more mindful of needing to protect my lungs as well. All right, there are the general dimensions. This will probably be a little more compact when it's done. Um, the other thing I want to do is to make it more portable by having it fold. I'm going to put a hinge between the fire tunnel and the riser so it can fold back onto itself just to make it a little more compact. All right, before I start fine tuning the connections here, I'm gonna get the galvanized coating off this square tube. While I'm at it, I'm going to take the mill scale off this piece and clean up this hinge. I'm going to take the mill scale off this plate steel on the side that I'm going to use for cooking. I'm going to leave it on the other side because it will actually help protect the metal a little bit. With the addition of a reclaimed table saw top, my workmate becomes a welding table. I'm going to start with the hinged connection. To get this to close without that gap, I'm going to notch the hinge into the tube.
once those beads are ground down a little bit, it should fold nice and flat. plug weld the last two holes in the hinges. I'm gonna put some beads on the inside of the tube for extra strength, and I'm not gonna grind those down. Not surprised there's a little warping with all the welding. But I think I can hammer this back to the nice clean lines I had before. Trains here. In my hammering, I messed up the alignment of the hinge. And I think what I'm gonna do is just use uh, a piece of the hinge that I cut off to replace this part of the barrel. It's out of round now, and anyway, so I think I'm just gonna cut this off and then put this in alignment with the pin in and then weld it back on to this side. I think that'll solve the problem. Rather than try and uh, reshape this. Gonna replace the bent up barrel with the one that's nice and round. Now I can really focus on getting this fit just right and then welding the hinge in place. If I were to do this again, I would do it this way. I would um, not try and weld the hinge to both halves, rather weld the hinge to this half and then just use the 
the small piece of barrel here. I show you my mistakes so you don't have to make them. This hinge definitely complicated this build. <laughs> but I like to push the envelope and try new things. The hinge makes this a lot cooler. All right, I'm happy with this movement. The joint is gonna be not perfect, but I think it's pretty close. So on to the next step. And I'm gonna take this hinge apart so it's easier to work with. Not the prettiest welds, but I think they'll stick. Let me clean these up a little bit.
I want a really strong thermal connection between the grill plate and the top of the fire tunnel. So I'm going to cut some slits down the center of it so I can plug weld down to the top of the fire tunnel. I'll tack it in underneath the sides as well, but I want that strong connection right there in the middle to get the heat transfer up to the grill. Okay, hey, the plug weld did not work. I'll just tack underneath the edges. I think the grooves for the plug welds did actually help. Once I had welded it down from underneath, when I went back and filled in those grooves, if there was any gap, it filled it in. So that was, I think I do still have some nice connections there between the fire tunnel and the, the grill plate. All right, before I fit up the grill here, I'm gonna do a quick test fit with the hinge, make sure it aligns correctly. All right, I'm happy with that. It's a cold day and, and this metal is pretty cold as well, so I'm actually gonna preheat before I do the weld. It's a nice connection, and I'm happy with how the two pieces are lining up as well. There is a little bit of an air gap on both sides of the hinge here, but that won't matter. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out. Check the reverse here. I will need to grind that bead down so it will fold backwards, but I'll get to that. My grill is gonna be made from a combination of the square stock and round stock. The round stock will be the main tines of the grill, which I'm gonna do crosswise like this. So they sort of gather the heat in the middle and then spread it out to the edges. But I don't want the grill to be dripping off the edges, so I'm gonna put this square stock here on the edges on both sides to prevent that. Let's get the paint off that. Thank <laughs> you. 
I got a little bit of curve in the end of this that I need to straighten out. Now I'm gonna add the cross pieces. Hopefully I've spaced my beads such that they won't interfere with that, but I can always grind them if I need to. The round stock was also galvanized, so I removed that coating as well. I might need to do a little fit up on these to make each one fit correctly. All right, now for the weld up. I ended up with wider gaps than I initially had put pieces in, so I've got a couple extra. Having to shorten them up a little bit, though, I think as this is being welded, the heat is kind of twisting it up a little bit. Not by much, maybe a, a sixteenth of an inch is what I've been having to take off. The next step is to add the legs. And I'm gonna reuse the legs I cut off the smaller rocket stove. I'm gonna notch these out, kinda of go over that corner with this 45 degree angle.
trains here. These legs are all different lengths, but I wanted to get them welded on, and then I can even out the length and make it parallel to the bottom of the stove. Okay, so it's it's not gonna fold flat because of the legs. I should have welded them to the side of the fire tunnel instead of the halfway on the side, halfway on the bottom. But I'm gonna live with that. It would take too much to undo it. Last thing I need to do here on the fabrication is make a mechanism that will allow me to secure the riser in this position. I don't want this falling over, obviously, while I'm cooking. Gonna weld some screws into those holes. I'll secure a metal strap between the two screws using wing nuts. Now that the screws are in place and I know the precise distance, I'm gonna make the plate. I need to shorten this up a little bit and add some sides to it because my tube is wider down here, and I don't want the pellets or the pistachio shells falling off the side. I'm also going to make a plate that goes in this tube to kind of provide an air channel down the back side here to get to the base of the fuel. It's going to give me a chance to use my brand new square from Guru Machine Works. My buddy Greg Porter over at Greg's Garage here on YouTube makes these in three sizes. This is the smallest, two inches. It actually has a removable end piece in case you need to use it on some flat stock that lines up nicely on the edge. Beautiful anodized orange. I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick these up. It's made right here in America. And Greg makes stuff that's super precise. So you can count on these measurements being exact. Not an affiliate, just a friend. I left some tabs to help this index into the tube the way I want it to. And I just used this tab that was already here.
because I've shortened this tube, I need to also shorten the fork here that holds the pellets. I don't want it quite down so far. I think I'm gonna take off about half an inch. Rather than mess with this end, I'm just gonna cut a half inch out of this. I'm just gonna weld the new tab on. I need to cover the sides of my fuel fork here. That's what we'll call this. Looks like a fork. And so I'm gonna use some salvaged round stock. I'm gonna cut off this chafing dish holder. It ain't pretty, but it doesn't have to be. This is gonna be inside the fire. Train's here. These openings are a little bigger than the pellets, but I think they'll do fine for the pistachio shells. And if I need to fix this up for the pellets, I can do that. Lots of details on this, but I'm really close to getting to light this thing up. The last thing I'm gonna do before I give this thing a coat of paint is I am gonna shorten this riser a little bit. I've used the one, two, three proportions, but I'm gonna cheat a little bit on that just to make this a little less gangly. And I'm okay with the efficiency going down just a little bit. I'm gonna cut this down to 16 inches. If you're curious why I didn't start out the project with my Guru Machine Works Square, it's because I didn't have it yet. This is the perfect size for marking this two inch tube. I'm gonna notch the top of the riser so I can also use this to sit a teapot on, something like that, to boil water while I'm grilling. There'll still be plenty of heat coming out the top here. It'd be nice to be able to utilize that as well. Time to paint.
Now I'm gonna hit this with some high heat ultra. It's good for up to 1200 degrees. They do make a 2000 degree paint as well. All right, it's time to light this thing up and I can season the grill with some canola oil. I split up a spruce two by four that I'm gonna use as my primary fuel. And then I'll add some pistachio shells into the fuel magazine. I'm gonna drop a little dryer lint down there in the bottom. Start the fire. I'm having a hard time getting this thing to light. I'm going to try taking out this air divider here so I can get more fuel in without blocking so much of the airflow. I'm also going to switch to some sticks. Got a nice sideways burn going. The heat is flowing up the riser. Still a little smoky. Let me feed this fire. Here in a little rocket, just for a second there. Been a little bit of a challenge to keep this lit, and I, I did put the metal piece back in, and that didn't help with uh, using the round wood here. So I took it out again. I'm not convinced that the pistachio shells are burning well enough. They're going down slightly. I think I'm going to put this fire out and switch to the pellets. Let's see if there are any burned shells on the bottom. A few burned shells, but I'm not convinced they were burning quickly enough to make a difference. Let me reset this with some pellets and see how that goes. I finally got this thing to stay lit. What ended up working was adding a few pellets to the front section of the firebox as well. All right, I'm gonna keep an eye on this and start to season the grill. I'm gonna see if I can't separate this piece from my fuel magazine at the weld here. So I've got the firebox cut off. And the idea here is to switch this from 
a J tube to an L tube. Reattaching this like that. So I think I had some airflow issues with regard to the draft, but I also had some issues with regard to ash removal. So I'm gonna add that in as well. Thought about using this piece to connect back, but got lots of cuts and welds in it. So I'm gonna start clean. The metal there and the welds were super work hardened. Rather than grind it down, I'm just gonna cut it off. My air gap divider was already sized to slide into this tube. So I'm gonna use that for the floor of the ashtray. Although I'm gonna shorten this tab a little bit, make another tab like that. These notches will just give me a little more burnable area on the fuel. I'm gonna cut that screw off a little bit. I think this needs some sides. All right, I think I can light this thing up. Before I paint it, I wanna make sure it works. <laughs> Train's here.
hear the oil on the grill sizzling. Still have concerns about the airflow, but it does look like the pellets are firing off. A nice steady even heat would be just fine. I'm gonna pull the ashtray and see if it improves the airflow. Looks like the pellets are burning on their own. I was about to call this thing a failure, move the camera around to this side of the stove, and I saw this. There's fire moving through the fire tunnel, and it gave me a little bit of hope that this could be salvaged. Well, thanks for watching. I know this was a different video in, in that it was a little bit longer, and that it was a project I'm making here that didn't work like I thought it would. Although I'm fairly convinced that if I just doubled the size of the tube, then I think this concept can work. In fact, I might try that in the future. You know this is an experimentation channel and I show you my successes and failures. <laughs> Usually they're not this catastrophic. My mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next Saturday.